Hi, this is the second video in this short series on eating disorders. And in this video, I'm going to talk about bulimia nervosa. And um, what you have here once again is the diagnostic criteria from the DSM. So with bulimia, what we're seeing here is recurrent episodes of binge eating. So that's the first diagnostic criterion. And when we say an episode of binge eating, it's eating a lot in a, in, in a short period of time. A discrete means um, limited period of time, an amount of food that is definitely larger than what most people would eat during that time, and a sense of lack of control over eating during the episode. So once a person starts, they can't stop or they feel like they can't stop, they lose control. And uh, for uh, criterion B, recurrent inappropriate compensatory behaviors. Now, what does that mean? A compensatory behavior is a purging behavior, we could call it a purging behavior, which is typically vomiting, misuse of laxatives, diuretics, other medications, um, fasting, excessive exercise, any combination of these. So somebody might have a huge out of control binge and then um, vomit and take uh, laxatives, maybe take diuretics, maybe exercise for three or four hours and then decide on you know starving or fasting tomorrow. So and, and what we have here is frequency duration and um, in D, we see that self-evaluation is unduly influenced by body shape and weight. So in other words, somebody, somebody's sense of herself has to do with what she sees on the scale. So, um, you know, five pounds up and she hates herself. She has a horrible day. She feels terrible, maybe, which, which might actually lead to more binging and purging behaviors. And on a day where she's feeling low weight, maybe, uh, you know, five pounds under what she normally is, she's going to feel better about herself. Probably not great, but better about herself. So her entire sense of herself is reliant upon uh, her weight. In bulimia, we typically see average or slightly above average weight. So when you see somebody who's really underweight and tells you that she binges and purges, you're more likely looking at anorexia, binge purge type. And with bulimia, you're usually looking at somebody who is average to slightly over uh, average weight. And that's because you can't rid the body of that amount of caloric intake. All of the purging is going to get rid of maybe 50% of the calories. And if you've just taken in 15,000 calories or 10,000 calories, that still leaves you with, you know, five to 7,000 calories that your body is going to absorb. Um, Typically, the onset of bulimia is about the same as anorexia, often a little later. So, you know, the eating disorders used to actually be classified under disorders usually appearing in infancy, childhood, and adolescence. So they were childhood disorders because they typically appear uh, un before the age of 18. Uh, and again, often we're going to see this with... Um, um, pubescent girls or teenage girls and sometimes what happens is uh, girls find out about uh, say vomiting as a way to get rid of food either they hear somebody vomiting in the bathroom stall next to them or their friends tell them about them or they hear about it somehow and they try it because they want to eat they want to eat good stuff there's you know ice cream and cake and whatever they want to eat, they don't want to gain weight. It seems like a good solution. Seems like a good idea at the beginning. But then it becomes 
a cycle. There are some problems that are cyclical. Um, dieting tends to lead to binging, or I should say fasting leads to binging. So you try to stop eating, you don't eat for a day or two, you're so hungry, and you're so uh, consumed with thoughts of food that when you do start to eat, you can't stop. And then there's this sense of, well, I already broke my diet, so I might as well just go ahead and eat a whole bunch. And then that gets taken to a binge. After the binge, the person feels terrible, maybe vomits, and vomiting empties the stomach. And what's interesting is that vomiting perpetuates a sense of hunger. So uh, hunger has to do, uh, our sense of hunger has to do with how full our stomach is. And with binging and purging, that sense of fullness gets distorted because one eats past a sense of fullness with a binge. And then releasing that sudden deflation of the stomach is also confusing to the sense of hunger. So um, that adds to the cycle. Typically after a binge, there's compensatory behavior, guilt and shame. And of course, there's still the desire to lose weight. So you might see fasting or any of the other compensatory behaviors. And then that again is going to lead to a binge. Unlike the client with anorexia, the client with bulimia feels very out of control. The client with anorexia is out of control too. And she's even more likely to die than the person with bulimia. However, she feels more in control. The, the person with anorexia. The person with bulimia feels out of control. And um, because of that, because she feels more out of control, and because it's not working, she's she feels fat, she feels overweight, she might be overweight, she might be more motivated for treatment. Um, there's still that fear that you will take away her compensatory behavior without helping her control her eating. And again, we have to respect and appreciate the level at which this person's self-evaluation is consumed by how much she eats and how much she weighs and how much she purges. So if, if the therapist doesn't appreciate how important that is, she's not going to establish a relationship with her client and her client will leave. They're going to choose the disorder over you, or it will be the disorder over you. And it, it will, it's not really a choice, right? It's mental illness. Um, there's also a lot of shame. There are a lot of behaviors in bulimia, a lot of purging behaviors that, are, that seem shameful, maybe disgusting. Sometimes you'll see that um, your client might talk about throwing out food. So she made a, a whole pan of muffins and she ate two and then decided to throw out the rest. But then she went back and rummaged through the trash and ate them. And then she took laxatives so, or threw up. So all of these behaviors have a level of, they're not socially acceptable. Um, eating from the trash, vomiting, uh, you know. So there's going to be some shame, a sense of loss of control, and um, that's going to impact the treatment. That's going to impact her ability to show up for treatment. But this client, we, we don't want to conflate eating disorders in general because this client is going to, her treatment is going to be very different. We want to restore a sense of control for her. And um, sometimes that means helping her not binge so that she can not purge. Um, at the same time, you're guaranteeing your client that your goal is not to make her fat. That is not your goal. And you can say that honestly because it is true. Typically, people with bulimia struggle with um, other disorders. Sometimes 
certain personality problems, relationship problems, uh, addictions. There's a very strong sense of addiction both in, in bulimia and in anorexia. In bulimia, if you think about it as a kind of addiction to, um, to food along with an obsession with being thin or a need to be thin and loved, then you can see how the person tries to stop, gives into temptation, eats, regrets, um, has shame and uh, self-loathing, tries to stop again, again is consumed with craving, goes back to eating. And I say all this because sometimes it's also useful to have some kind of a 12-step program. I'm not saying that eating disorders are addictions, but I am saying that sometimes 12-step programs can help with recovery, partly because people call one another on their issues and on, on their behaviors and hold one another accountable. And sometimes it feels like only another person who's having the same experience can hold one accountable. It's not the same as therapy. And it doesn't mean that the person has an addiction, but it is sometimes a good um, adjunct to treatment. Okay, I'm going to end this video on bulimia here. Thanks.